In this video here, we're going to cover how to set up uh, text for client notes and for crew notes on estimates. So in some of the previous videos, we covered how to do pricing on estimates. In this one, we're going to cover how to set up notes so that the proposals end up looking good for customers. Before we get to estimates, it's really important that you understand where some of the text can come from to make it a lot faster and easier to build estimates. There is a section under the estimate menu called terms and conditions. Terms and conditions allow you to set up default text that's really easy and quickly added to estimates. So for example, I can set up a default explanation for spring cleanup. So anytime I want to do spring cleanup on a job, it's really easy for me to just add this block of text with a click of a button instead of typing it all over every time. So it's important to realize that number one, you can set up a list of common terms and conditions. So usually your specifications for things like spring cleanup or your planting warranty is another example of a good thing that might be uh, handy to have as a term and condition. Your payment terms would be another good example of a term and condition. So these are things I'm going to set up because I'm going to use these over and over again. They're going to be very similar from job to job. The other thing to be aware of in terms and conditions is that you can also set up contract verbiage defaults for the beginning and the end of your proposal. So if you go to the setup default screen, you can see that you can set up a standard header for your install estimates. So this had, this had become before the price. This text would be printed before we got into our pricing and also a standard footer. And the standard footer is going to come after our pricing. So usually a standard header is like, thank you for allowing us the opportunity to bid on this project, sort of an introduction to your company. And the standard footer is usually the terms and conditions of your installation contracts. You can set all that up in the setup terms and conditions default menu. You can do the same for service estimates. So I might have a separate uh, introduction and footer for service estimates. So all that I can set up default so that when I go to creating estimates, I don't have to enter these every single time. Every time I create an installation estimate, it is going to automatically put this because it's in my defaults, this bit of text here and this bit of text here at the beginning and at the end of my estimate. Now let's jump over to the estimates and see how this actually works. But it's a good idea in the long run to set up terms and conditions. They'll save you tons of hours uh, as you go through your, your estimating. So I'll jump to standard estimates here. We'll open a standard estimate. Now in this estimate, I have two work areas, a garden and a driveway. There are notes for the garden and the driveway. So if I hit edit, you can see I've got some notes here. I also have some notes here, but these notes that I'm looking at here aren't really for the customer or for the proposal. Where we want to set up our client proposal notes are actually up here in a separate tab. So for existing users, users who are used to the old estimating, these notes used to be here under this menu. We've since moved them to here as they're a lot easier to, to play with here. Client notes here gives me a note box for each section. So if I click garden, I'm going to have a note box for that section, a note box for this section. So I can enter notes at each different section of the estimate to come out on the printed client proposal. Now I've already got some notes in here for garden, so that's good. And now I'll put some in for the driveway. And I'll have uh, driveway to be installed uh, with a 12 inch base. And I could go on and on to describe how I want to install the driveway. Now, if you've set driveway specifications up as a term and condition, it's even faster for you because you can click add terms and conditions. You could pick your driveway specifications. I don't have one here, but maybe I could put in my general warranty. And now that automatically comes in here. So it saves me all that time of typing all that time after time. And I know that from estimator to estimator, we're all using the same uh, verbiage. You can then bold things, italicize things, bullet things, do that kind of stuff um, until you get the look that you want. And then when you get this and all these sections flushed out with what you want to say, when you go to the print button, just simply pick the proposal you want to generate, hit print. And when you click open, you'll be able to look at your proposal. Each section will have its verbiage underneath the total price. Now there's a couple of different layouts of proposals. There's ones that show materials and don't show materials if you are new to this video, but here's one that's really just showing. So I've done all my text, all my terms and conditions, everything has started to come in the estimate. Most of this came from my default terms and conditions. So I didn't have to type my intro. I didn't have to type the bulk of the work here. 
I only had to type my work area descriptions. And there's faster ways to use work area descriptions. If you're using templates for estimating, so for example, if I had a driveway template and I used my template, the client notes from your template will automatically be inserted here. So you don't have to type that every time. So in your work area templates, which you can find under the item catalog, you build your driveway, all the labor and equipment and materials you need to think of when you estimate a driveway. You add the text for the driveway in there as well that you want to come out on the customer and the crew notes. And then anytime you use that template on an estimate, those bits of text will automatically be inserted here in your notes fields. Crew notes are the exact same way. Here I've got a crew note for the garden. For the driveway, I could have, for example, a small tool checklist and come up with things that I wanted them to have on their trailer, quick cut saws and levels and that kind of thing. And again, this is way better served if you're using templates because you've got all this stuff automatically. But I'll set that stuff up and then I'll go print and I'll print a job planner. And when I print a job planner, I'll have all those notes there that I entered for the crew showing up on the crew's job planner. So garden and planting specifications and then, and then all the notes of how we're going to do the job comes out as well on the crew's job planner. There's my small tool checklist for the driveway. So that's where the crew notes come from. And that's basically it. So three things you need to remember on notes. Making notes, they're all in here. So you can add notes to each section or each work area by going to your client notes. These are going to show up on proposals. The crew notes are what's going to show up on the job planners. These are for the crew reports. And to make it easier to automatically set up crew notes and client notes, there's two areas that will help you a lot. One is terms and conditions. So you can set up default verbiages so that you're very quickly to add and drop. And the last one is in templates. So under the item catalog, if you go to templates, if I open my paver driveway template and go to notes, I've already set up some customer notes and I've already set up some crew notes so that I wouldn't have to do what I did in that example and type those out. They would automatically come across. And that's a little bit about notes. Should help you make your estimates a lot faster than typing all that stuff manually.